But I began getting calls from people like hedge fund managers, investment bankers, people who had nothing to do with the wilderness, because I use a lot of wilderness examples in deep survival. They weren't interested in the wilderness. They were interested in decision making and especially decision making where there is limited information, confusing information. And that's, of course, what deep survival is about. So I would talk to them about how the decision making system in our brain works, first of all, how it can systematically mislead us. And then once we've gotten into trouble, what the steps and characteristics are to get out of trouble. And so that's why, I mean, firefighters, uh, law enforcement, military, people who are naturally in hazardous environments want to know like, well, how do I avoid making that stupid decision that's going to kill me? And I think it's it's a good jumping off point, and then we'll deep dive into you know some of the the more specifics. But it's an important point to make with regard to we have kind of a fallacy that uh, firefighters, law enforcement, emergency managers, EMS they're they're different, right? You know they they make decisions differently, or physiologically they're different, neurologically they're different. Um, their approaches could be different, but ultimately speaking, from a physiological neurological perspective. Stress is stress. Decision-making processes are decision-making processes, and and I would, I would encourage people to even though the context could be firefighting or maybe it's Mount Hood and three parties ripping off the side of a mountain, or it's a rock climber, or you know it's a firefighter that's low crawling. It's important for us to recognize that it transcends all of that because we're really talking about the human organism and then the human brain ultimately. So I'm.